In-depth Tsuguru Geto. Geto Suguru is one of the most intricately developed characters in Jujutsu Kaisen. Before becoming the antagonist of the series, he was a humble and compassionate individual, regarded as half of the strongest pair at Jujutsu High School. He was like Yin to Gojo Satoru's Yank, guiding him to be more empathetic towards the weaker ones. However, harsh realities shattered his idealism and morals, leading to a drastic transformation. Suguru's disillusionment with non-sorcerers stemmed from a belief that their elimination would end the creation of cursed spirits, thereby preventing sorcerer deaths. Let's delve deep into the character of Suguru Geto, from a promising student at Jujutsu High School to meeting his demise as the worst curse of all time. 1. Intellect and Cunning Tsukuru Geto stands out as a formidable character in Jujutsu Kaisen, recognized as one of only four special grade sorcerers. His reputation as the most dangerous curse to humanity further underscores his power. Indeed, when someone like Satoru Gojo, the strongest curse user ever known, is acting like this... No, there's not! You're really going to kill all non-Jujutsu sorcerers now? You know that's impossible! There's no point in chipping away at something you can't possibly achieve! Huh? It is a clear indicator that Suguru is on an extraordinary level. Suguru's cursed spirit manipulation technique is a critical aspect of his abilities. He gains control over cursed spirits by consuming a small black orb, a byproduct of the spirits he absorbs. This ability also extends to curses from other sorcerers, provided he eliminates their master. Despite the unpleasant taste of these orbs, which he likened to vomit, this method significantly amplifies his power. Geto's skill allows him to manage thousands of curses simultaneously and maintain vast reserves of cursed energy. He also possesses the ability to read the flow of cursed energy of other sorcerers without difficulty. His maximum technique, Uzumaki, allows him to amalgamate a multitude of curses into one potent attack. And another technique, Curtain, is a barrier that segregates everything within it from the outside world. This barrier can even contain other sorcerers or lowered above a weaker barrier. Tsuguru Geto's strategic prowess in handling various situations is unparalleled. As a student at Jujutsu High, he was not only brilliant, but also served as a vital reminder for key details to Satoru Gojo, who often overlooked them. His intelligence extended far beyond academics, particularly evident in combat. A notable example of this is his encounter with Toji Fushiguro. Suguru astutely caught the sorcerer killer off guard, swiftly moving behind him with the intention of absorbing absorbing the inventory curse, thereby cutting off Toji's access to his weapons. Furthermore, Suguru's intellect is evident in his takeover of the remnants of the Time Vessel Association. He cleverly utilizes this opportunity to absorb the curses of non-sorcerers who visit for prayer. This tactic enables him to amass thousands of curses. With these resources, he orchestrates the night parade of a hundred demons that declared war on Jujutsu High. He strategically lured everyone to Kyoto and Shinjuku while he engaged in a battle with Yuta and Jujutsu High School, with his ultimate goal being able to absorb Rika. It is believed that despite his defeat and unfortunate demise, if his resources had not been split between Shinjuku and Kyoto, he would probably win against Yuta and successfully absorb Rika, furthering his goal of eradicating non-sorcerers. He is frequently ranked as the second or third strongest character in the entirety of Jujutsu Kaisen, following Satoru Gojo and Sukuna, owing this to his strategic nature and intellect. These traits enable him to anticipate his enemy's moves and increase his chances of victory by always thinking one step ahead. 2. Idealism and Philosophy In terms of personal philosophy, Geto Suguru holds a peculiar take on it. He views non-sorcerers as corrupt, weak, and root cause of cursed spirits in the Jujutsu world. His ambition is to eliminate every single one of them, the final traces of his humanity effectively obliterated by Geto Suguru, who becomes a religious cult leader. This is the same Geto who, just a few episodes ago in Season 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen, was seen enjoying slice-of-life moments with his friend, Gojo Satoru. 
This raises the question of whether Geto Suguru was always like this, or if certain events influenced him to his current state. To answer this, there is much to consider, starting with a better understanding of cursed spirits and cursed energy. It's believed that everyone, both non-sorcerers and sorcerers, emit cursed energy, although sorcerers do so to an almost negligible extent. Sorcerers have the ability to control their cursed energy, allowing it to flow through their bodies and using it to combat cursed spirits. In contrast, non-sorcerers emit cursed energy without any control, which, combined with their fears, gives rise to cursed spirits. It is a natural process. Originally, Geto was morally upright, empathetic, and kind. Caught between the facade of Jujutsu Hai, his ideal-driven happiness, and the harsh realities of the world. In his teenage years, witnessing the dark side of humanity, including their dominance in social and economic spheres, and the lack of recognition for sorcerers, with death often being the outcome, profoundly affected Suguru. It made him rethink his definition of the weak and question whom he was truly working for. During a chance meeting with Yuki, who also aspires for a world free of cursed spirits, she proposes two solutions, either teach humanity to control cursed energy or eradicate cursed energy from the world entirely. Toji Zenin, a powerful non-sorcerer without cursed energy who endangered Gojo Satoru, exemplifies the latter. Geto contributes to this dialogue by suggesting the extermination of humanity as a means to eliminate cursed spirits once and for all. Understanding this plot is crucial because a morally upright individual like Geto isn't suddenly driven to commit genocide against an entire population without reason. Kind individuals can be pushed towards evil when they realize that the world and its people are predominantly self-interested, driven by personal needs rather than notions of good or evil. They act in alignment with their desires, which is just an unpleasant truth about human nature. After all, concepts of right and wrong are subjective, and in this context, Geto isn't entirely wrong. He's simply someone who made a choice that deviated from the established norms of Jujutsu Hai, leading him to be labeled as evil or the antagonist. This label propels him to continue actions that he believes will help him achieve his goals. 3. Disdain of the Weak Tsuguru Geto emerges as a character who despises weakness and assembles a formidable team to transform the Jujutsu world. His disdain is directed towards non-sorcerers, whom he views as weak for either fleeing from or falling victim to the cursed spirits that their own fears and emotions create. This change in behavior didn't just appear spontaneously on a Monday morning. Instead, it's the result of accumulated frustration and a growing awareness of the world's horrors, driving Geto to the extreme of wanting to annihilate humanity. From a personal standpoint, if one were to metaphorically step into Geto's shoes, especially after enduring the ordeal of consuming thousands of cursed spirits, each tasting like a towel used to clean up vomit, and experiencing humiliation at the hands of non-sorcerers, it's conceivable to find oneself sympathizing with Geto's ideology. His commitment to protecting the weak never wavers. Instead, Geto redefines who the weak are in his perspective. Sorcerers, a minority in a world overwhelmingly populated by non-sorcerers who disregard them, become the weak in Geto's eyes. Consequently, he starts to despise those he previously viewed as weak. His personality and actions are deeply rooted in his his ideals and morality. Those driven by his sense of righteousness seek meaning in their daily lives. His morals were initially shaped by Jujutsu Hai, but following events like Riko and Hibara's deaths, Tsuguru's convictions are shattered, leading him to question the purpose of his actions. The outcome of this is the path he chooses, as mentioned earlier, in the stance of his philosophy. However, eradicating an entire population is an impossible task, and on some level, Geto understands this. Therefore, or he aligns his actions with the concept of survival of the fittest, reminiscent of Darwin's theory. The human brain is wired to avoid threats, and by placing all of humanity under the fear of annihilation, they are compelled to find ways to survive. 
potentially leading to their evolution. In Ghetto's view, this would result in humanity either becoming devoid of cursed energy or adapting to become sorcerers in the Jujutsu world. This would protect the sorcerer's fate and achieve his objective of eradicating cursed spirits from the world. A quote by Suguru himself, It's just that in this world, I couldn't truly be happy from the bottom of my heart. JJK Zero, Chapter 4 for manipulation and deception. Suguru's charming demeanor and composed personality frequently serve as tools for manipulation and control. Although he was genuinely kind during his time at Jujutsu High, after his expulsion, he begins to leverage his charisma and persuasive abilities. He skillfully manipulates language to articulate his viewpoints, as seen when he speaks to Yuta in JJK Zero. During this conversation, he explains about the paradox the Jujutsu society is in and how bad it requires the change that Suguru is striving for, despite his disdain for non-sorcerers, often derogatorily calling them monkeys. Damn monkeys. Suguru utilizes them for two major purposes, curse and money collection. After becoming the leader of an organization in Kyoto, his disgust for non-sorcerers is so profound that he feels the need to disinfect himself after contact. If the monkeys fail to fulfill their purpose, he feels no remorse eliminating them. Suguru is a mastermind at the psychological game and uses every tool at his disposal to advance his cause. He emotionally manipulates people by promising them roles in his envisioned new world order, gaining their loyalty, and attracting like-minded individuals who share his values towards a unified goal. He refers to these individuals, especially sorcerers, as family, forging a bond to solidify their commitment. This strategy affects actively gathers people who subscribe to his ideology and are dissatisfied with the current world order. He even raises a group of sorcerers to assist in the night parade of a hundred demons. His tactical intelligence deceives sorcerers into converging to Shinjuku and Kyoto while he pursues his true objective. In his battle with Yuta, Suguru expresses a twisted satisfaction in seeing fellow sorcerers protect each other, as it aligns with the world he aspires to create. He believes that eliminating a fellow sorcerer is not something he wants to partake in, but it is a necessary sacrifice for the greater good of all future sorcerers he is fighting for. His interactions with Yuta reveal the extent of his manipulative tactics and the depth of his ideological convictions. Additionally, Suguru is an adept fighter, often surprising his opponents with his martial arts skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He uses the common misconception that he relies solely on cursed spirits to his advantage. During combat, he brings up past events or insecurities to psychologically destabilize his opponents, maintaining a calm and composed demeanor to enhance the effect of this mental warfare. 5. Anti-Sorcerer Sentiment Geto Suguru, the systematic operator of the Jujutsu world, feels that his time at the Jujutsu High School has changed. It has distorted the righteous beliefs he once held dear. The Suguru we see now is intent on altering the ideals upheld by the superiors of Jujutsu High. In the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, events are predominantly orchestrated by the superiors and elders, who also have ties to human representatives. These elders are responsible for the decision of assigning teenagers as young as 15 or 17 years of age to life-threatening missions, sometimes not even being able to predict the correct difficulty level of it, which often leads to tragic outcomes like Haibara's death. In another case, a student named Kinji Hakari was expelled from the school for disrespecting an elder, regardless of his useful strength. Moreover, the system showed no concern for students' well-being, as seen when a grieving Suguru showing clear signs of depression after Riko's death was still sent on solo missions. The educational approach lacked proper teaching and supervision, with the elders ready to discard anything that didn't align with their views. This was evident when they sent Yuji, Nobara, and Megumi on a perilous mission during Gojo's absence, hoping to eliminate Yuji without concern for the others. The system is straight up built on Spartan-like system values. Those who survive stay with us. The elders are extreme traditionalists who only care about themselves. Someone like Suguru who grew up in this environment 
naturally grew to despise this system and seeks to challenge and transform it. But this intention comes with its own twist. Sugudu wants to protect the weak that in his eyes are the sorcerers, but he's doing it in a manner where he himself knows he must challenge the very system and people who raised him just because this way of change does not align with the elders of the Jujutsu world. This is not to justify Geto's actions, but to illustrate the complexity and real-life manifestation of his twisted ideology. The elders' indifference extends to the point where they wouldn't care if everyone else perished, as long as they survive, even if it means the loss of all Jujutsu high school students. It's understandable for someone to develop animosity towards a system that is both outwardly and inwardly flawed, showing no regard for the very people who sustain it. Geto is an extremist by nature who never finds a middle ground. He was once excessively kind, risking his life for non-sorcerers, driven by an ideal that gave him purpose. Later, his new purpose becomes protecting the sorcerer minority by eliminating non-sorcerers, hence getting rid of cursed spirits, a drastic measure he believes will grant them a normal life and avoid the pile of corpses declared as their eventual end. This twisted way of loving something and finding meaning in his actions is deeply rooted in his sentiments against the traditional systematic approach he grew up with. 6. Connection with Cursed Spirits Suguru Geto is the only character that has a complicated relationship with cursed spirits that form the foundation of his jujutsu technique. Unlike other sorcerers who typically rely on summoning a shikigami for assistance in battle, with Megumi's Ten Shadow technique being an exception, Geto's approach is distinct. His ability allows him to first confront and defeat a cursed spirit, then consume a ball of its pure cursed energy to gain control over it and manipulate it for further use. This unique method is integral to his maximum technique, Uzumaki. Another point to note is that if the cursed spirits used are of semi-grade 1 or higher, then Geto can use in a cursed technique of the spirit as well. This is limited to single use. Another advantage is that there is no limit to how many cursed spirits Geto can absorb and control. He has demonstrated the ability to manage over 6,000 spirits. During the night parade of a hundred demons, Geto divided his forces into a 2,000 to 4,000 plus ratio of cursed spirits where he sent the first to Kyoto and Shinjuku and the rest to use in his battle against Yuta. Geto also strategically saves and forms alliances with sorcerers, such as the twins Nanako and Mimiko to advance his goal of protecting sorcerers by eliminating non-sorcerers. His ability to form such strategic alliances underscores his danger, earning him the label of the worst curse of all time. Although this is more relevant to Kenjaku, who after Geto's death took over his body, he formed alliances with many special grade curse spirits for his cause. 7. Commitment to Change Suguru Geto has always been a psychological prodigy since the early days of Jujutsu High School. To be able to hold empathy for the weak is a quality that makes people human, which was a quite prominent trait in Suguru. He was disciplined and deeply empathic, internalizing this compassion as his driving purpose. He often found himself correcting Gojo Satoru, who tended to look down on those less powerful than him, given that the duo was renowned as the strongest special grade sorcerers. This often resulted in them having silly fights. However, upon confronting the harsher realities of life, Geto's perspective shifts, and he channels these abilities towards a new goal. Geto's dedication to initiating change largely stems from his opposition to the prevailing jujutsu hierarchy and the structure of the jujutsu world, which he sees as corrupt and ineffective. This perspective drives his urge to enact transformation. His extensive knowledge of curses equips him with the ability to harness various powers for manipulation and collective action towards this change. Geto goes beyond mere strategizing. He leads by example, actively participating in both verbal and physical confrontations. His direct involvement in these battles cements his role as a pivotal figure in this movement, significantly strengthening his followers' trust and belief in his leadership and vision. He perceives it as hypocritical for sorcerers to protect non-sorcerers, essentially suggesting that sorcerers, despite being a minority, are subjected to the whims and comforts of non-sorcerers. This line of thought leads him to a radical conclusion. Only Jujutsu sorcerers should be allowed to exist, 
with the rest eliminated, believing this will trigger the evolution of humanity. These beliefs form the core of his commitment to change and serve as a powerful driving force in the series. His stance makes him a complex and formidable antagonist, adding significant depth to the narrative of the series. It also illustrates how altered ideals can profoundly impact the ethical norms within the jujitsu world. 8. Conflicts with the Main Characters Geto Suguru formed several connections during his time at Jujutsu High, notably with students like Gojo Satoru, Shoko, Nanami, Haibara, and others. His relationship with Gojo Satoru is particularly significant. Gojo considered him his one and only best friend. Suguru played a crucial role in shaping Gojo into a compassionate mentor. Growing up in a clan that scorned the weak, Gojo was already somewhat aware of the Elder's harsh truth. However, it was Geto's influence that altered his worldview, teaching him to value the less powerful and understand the importance of protecting them. Suguru served as Gojo's moral compass, helping him discern right from wrong. He was the yin to Gojo's yang. While Gojo led a solitary life and eventually became the strongest, he lost his best friend in the process, a loss that deeply affected him, leading him to question his ability to cope with this change. Conversely, Geto who lived by principles, found himself isolated and depressed after confronting harsh realities, feeling abandoned as Gojo ascended to unparalleled strength. By the time Gojo realized the extent of Geto's change, it was too late. The Suguru he once knew had irreversibly transformed. This narrative poignantly illustrates the transformative nature of people, highlighting how the same events and failures can impact individuals differently. From the onset, their distinct personalities complemented each other, created a balanced dynamic. However, following the Star Plasma Vessel mission's failure and Rico's death, they arrived at divergent conclusions. One resolved to become stronger, to better protect others, while the other began to question the validity and worth of his ideals. Consequently, this divergence in perspectives led them down separate paths, ultimately driving them apart. In Geto's last moments, he confides in Gojo, admitting that he could never truly be happy in this world. Gojo's response to this is left intentionally ambiguous by the mangaka, open to the reader's interpretation. This mysterious reply elicits a laugh from Geto, who then asks Gojo to at least curse him at the end of his life. Many readers interpret Satoru's enigmatic words after the mangaka hinted in the fanbook that the words have already been said in the original manga as an acknowledgement that, regardless of the path Suguru chose or the actions he took, he remained Satoru's one and only best friend. His bond with Satoru is further highlighted when he refers to Satoru as his best friend in conversations with Nanako and Himeko. Similarly, Satoru Satoru himself acknowledges to Yuji that Geto is his only best friend. Despite their conflicts and divergent paths, it's evident that both harbor genuine care and positive intentions for one another. On the other side of the story, Geto exhibited multiple facets to his personality. One such aspect was his friendly demeanor, which he used strategically to befriend Yuta, ultimately aiming to eliminate him and acquire Rika. Additionally, Geto showed genuine affection for the twins Nanako and Himiko, whom he rescued and he attentively catered to their requests. His relationship with Shoko was lighthearted and friendly. He showed concern for Haibata, even requesting souvenirs, particularly sweets, considering Satoru might enjoy them too. Generally, he bore no ill will towards the sorcerers at Jujutsu High School, referring to them as his family. These interactions shed light on his true nature, suggesting that the path he chose to follow was that of someone pushed to their limits by the oppressive system. To put it succinctly, Geto Suguru was an extremist who couldn't find a middle ground between his moral convictions and his growing resentment towards humanity. He was exceedingly polite in a world that often fails to value kindness. He became a casualty of a system that neither mourned its losses nor appreciated and recognized its people. The path he ultimately took was the result of his unwavering morals being reshaped by his experiences. His best friend's failure to recognize his deteriorating 
fighting state sooner and the harsh realities of the jiu-jitsu world. Throughout his life, Geto was driven by a need to find meaning in his actions, whether it was in protecting humans or sorcerers, and it was in this quest that he found his purpose. The creator of Jujutsu Kaisen has masterfully crafted the character of Geto Suguru and his intricate thought process. This character stands as a poignant testament to the potential consequences of inadequate supervision and the lack of necessary care during one's formative years. Geto Suguru's fate raises important questions about accountability and support. Can he be held entirely responsible for his actions, or is his trajectory more a reflection of the absence of guidance and care in his life? life. Would his story have been different if the events leading to his downfall had not unfolded as they did? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you like this content, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Peace!